Hi, my name is Alan Richardson. In this video we're going to look at the repeater and the intruder parts of burp suite. We already looked at intercept. Intercept lets me stop a message either going to or coming from the server and amending it before it gets to either of those destinations. This lets me manipulate the results and see the results in the browser. The repeater lets me amend a request and replay it, but this is all done without using the, the browser GUI, so everything is done within Burp. So I'm going to capture a message, let's say 25 plus 30, and that will have gone through and been captured in Burp, so let's have a look at that. Here we go, 25 plus 30. So I'm just going to send this to the repeater. When it's in the repeater, we get the same request view. I can edit the parameters here. So 25 becomes 26, 31 becomes 32, and we let that message go through to the server. So here we can see that I can very quickly retest certain messages by putting in, in values that I want to experiment with without having to go through the the rigmarole of using the actual GUI. This is particularly useful with websites because very often we want to test particular paths through the application, but a lot of time that path comes down, the only important part of that path is a single request going to the server. When you get in that situation, you don't need to test through the GUI anymore. You might want to focus tests on the GUI because testing the GUI is important, but testing the actual workflow, the the actual back-end processing, the actual application part, we very often don't need to use the GUI. And the intruder lets us expand on that. With the intruder, I can do a very similar thing where I, I'm focusing in on a single request, but I can run that request across a set of data. Because sometimes we want to achieve data coverage in a much more formal way but without the hassle of having to type all these values in manually. So if I go back to the proxy and send this message to the intruder, in the intruder we can see that it's analyzed the message and identified the form elements and said you might want to vary the data in here, which we do, they're the various positions that we can have in the payload. Now I only want to use the numbers. I'm going to set everything to plus because I'm trying to give you an example of how to use this. The attack type is what defines the parameters that we're going to use, that defines the payloads that we can use. So a sniper attack only uses a single payload and uses the same value across all the different payload positions. I want to have different values coming into those payload positions, so I'm going to use Pitchfork. Pitchfork, basically, you can look up all these different attacks in the help documentation, but Pitchfork gives me a payload per position here and runs through each of those payloads sending the data in. So I now have two payloads in here, one for each of the positions. So I'm going to use some of the random values that we get for payloads. In this particular case, I'm going to use, for payload one, I will use just some character generation. Character blocks allows us to generate random string lengths. So I'm going to generate a random string of ones with a minimum length of 1 and a maximum length of 1000. That will give me a valid number, some very big numbers, some very small numbers. And let's just step through that step 5. So that's generated 200 payloads. For the second step, I'm going to generate some random numbers. Now you can experiment all those different payloads and generate a whole bunch of random data. And you can also create your own payloads, so you can identify the data scope that you want to put through on a particular message and then just create files that have the values in there. I very often use this when I want to create, uh, I've identified the request I want to test, I, I know the data I want to put through it, 
but I don't really want to go through the effort of writing an automated test and, and making it a data-driven test and feeding all the data in from a file or recording something in the Selenium IDE and using the, the data-driven plugin for that. I just want to do something simple. I just want to hit a request. I just want to hit a request with a, a bunch of data and this makes it easy. Uh, Burp Suite limits the speed you can send them through so if that becomes an issue for you, you can either buy the full version or you can use a tool like JBrew Fuzz which does a very similar thing. So I'm going to generate numbers. So I'm going to say I'm going to do some numbers from 1 to big number. I'm going to do random numbers. I'm going to generate 50. And because there's 50 here, the maximum number of messages that will be sent through on the attack I'm doing is 50. I'm quite happy with one digit numbers. I will allow the digits to go up to 499. I don't want any decimal points. There we go. So that's going to generate some random numbers for me. If I now go into Intruder and do Start Attack, we get told it's a throttled version. That's fine for our purposes. So now it's going to start randomly generating the payloads and sending them through. I don't expect this to expose any errors in the application. I'm just doing this to show you how simple it is to set up a bunch of data firing in on a certain request. And you can use this technique in your testing pretty easily to augment your exploratory testing through some tool use. So if we look down here in the request, we can see that it's randomly generated a string of ones and randomly generated a big number and pass that through to the application and we can see the result coming back. And because these are all states 200s, the application hasn't thrown an error. It's going through nice and slowly because it's throttled, but that gives us time to analyze the results. You can try this in your own testing.